Good morning, BookTube. Good morning. Good morning, BookTube. What is up, you guys? It is me. It's Monty. How is everyone doing? I'm still waking up. Um, but I'm here to start my reading vlog of Yellowface. I don't know why I brought my Kindle down here when I'm just going to throw up the cover. But I did. I have the Kindle in my hand. <laughs> And I'm going to start Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. If you are going to pre-order this book, I think the little HarperCollins Union has a bookshop. I'll try to leave that in the description. But anyway, let me move on. Like I said, a link to their little bookshop so you can support their efforts. I don't know if they're going to get rid of the bookshop after the strike is over. I would assume that they wouldn't. But like, maybe, they, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to keep up with it. But it'll be down there in the little description links to their socials i'll put in the description but yellow face is rf kwong's adult literary debut and i have to say i'm kind of excited i'm kind of excited but um that's all i got i really only came out here to start the vlog in a nice little i say new location but so many of my reading vlogs take place in this car but i'm about to go back upstairs to my apartment because it is fucking cold out here <laughs> fucking cold my windows are like frosted over and i'm sitting out here in shorts so the things I do for y'all. The things I do for y'all. No, it's really just because I, I, I did not think this through. Um, but I'm going to start reading this. I'm going to pull up some sprint replays. I'm going to find somebody that was sprinting recently that I missed live. I'll do some little sprinty sprints. I don't think I'll finish it in the time that it takes to do sprinty sprints. But maybe I will. In which case, sorry, but I'll just come back and talk about the book. But I hope that I don't so I can give you like a mid, my bin book thoughts or whatever. But I'm going to go because I am literally shivering. I'm shivering. I don't like it. I did not dress for the occasion to come out here and sit in this car. So I will come back later. Thoughts and opinions. Give you guys a little updating moment. Talk about the things I need to talk about. Um, that's it. Okay. Yes. So I'm at like 28, 29%. According to my Kindle, I have like three hours and seven minutes left. I did like two... No, an hour and a half of sprinting. Uh, and then I made myself some breakfast. I took a shower. We got nice and clean. I feel refreshed. And it is now 11.30. So we're still making good time. I still think that I could manage to knock this out. Obviously, I'll knock this out today. I don't think I'm going to get to any of my stretch goals, which is fine. Which is fine. I feel like I have learned that when I am in my car, it's a, it's a land of delusion. You know, when I'm sitting there, I really think I can do anything and everything and it's just not realistic it's not realistic for me to think that i'm going to get to all of the things that i want to get to as for yellow face i really don't want to get into an in-depth discussion because i don't think this book comes out until like april but what i do want to say is i think that there's an interesting through line one day one day i need to i know i'm, re I'm supposed to be like retiring and like we're gonna put back we're going to cut back, do like little six videos or whatever. But one day I really do. Maybe it'll be a Patreon video. Maybe that's what I'll do. But I, because last year I reread the Taylor Jenkins read. And I feel like there'd be, let me, let me finish this thought before I go on this tangent. But I think there's an interesting through line in all of Rebecca's books about myth making, about the lies people tell themselves to justify what they're doing. And again, um, I think that's really fascinating because we're watching Juniper do this like increasingly complex dance to justify the actions that she's doing and to her it sounds completely irrational and it makes sense and to the reader it's supposed to come off as completely unhinged and like what are you doing although I do think that if you were one of the bookstagrammers who was crying <laughs> talking about how you felt guilty about being a white person don't read this <laughs> don't read this <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I don't think that you are going to get the correct takeaways, but um, I think that that through line of the lies that people tell themselves to justify what they're doing is interesting because each time we've seen that play out in each one of her different works, like from the Poppy War series to Babel to now Yellowface, 
the lies are different. Sometimes the lies are on a larger scale, like, uh, you know, the lies that people have to tell themselves in Babel to continue the justification of colonization and the art of translation to continue to wield the silver in the way they do over there to what Rin has to do, what Rin is having to tell herself to justify her actions in that series, the things that the Hesperians are telling themselves to justify what they're doing. You know, obviously those are fantasy worlds, so the lies can be a little bit bigger. Although the lie of colonialism, <laughs> the lie of colonialism don't need a fantasy world. And here the lies are on a much smaller scale because it's one person, you know, rationalizing all the things that she's doing. But I think that's a really interesting connective tissue that RF Guam continues to uh, explore and to talk about. And maybe I'm reaching, you know, maybe, maybe I'm reaching. In her newsletter, she talked about how she, when she wrote this, she wanted people to be able to like find it, have that compulsively readable quality that a, that a good thriller has. And while the events of this are not thrilling, you know, there's not, at least so far in the first 28%, they're not thrilling in that way. I do think that it is unputdownable. I think that this is kind of like... <laughs> This feels like a drag, and I don't mean it because I do think there's a lot to interact with, but I do find that this is one of those books that is, I think that Juniper herself, <laughs> maybe I'm stealing from Juniper, maybe I'm culturally appropriating from her, but she talks about wanting to be like still literary, but also like commercial. And I said that in a, about a couple books last year where they were aggressively commercial, but there was still a lot of meat on the bones. And this is the kind of a book I think that if I saw at an airport and I picked it up from the airport, you know, bookstore or whatever, and I got some like gummy worms and I was sitting at the gate or I was sitting on the plane and I was going on a trip, I would, I would devour this. I would devour this. Like this is a book that you can study in a classroom and you can read by the beach. It is it's insane. Like, R.F. Kwong really is super skilled and talented. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are the, like, she out here literally running laps around the girls. So, I love to see it because <laughs> she continues to put out books. It's always sad when you find an author that the pen game is so strong, but then you have to wait, like, forever. Forever for them to give you things. And our, like, Rebecca continues to feed us. So, like, we're just truly not worthy. But so far, again, like, make sure this is pre-ordered. I'll leave links again, like I said, to bookstore. Mm, it'll be one bookstore. I'll leave a link to that down below. I might also leave a link to her little... Maybe that's what I'll do in 2023. In 2022, I really wanted to support her little... I think it's like the Harvard bookstore and the Yale bookstore. Um, and get some signed and personalized. Because, yeah, I need this. I need an RF Kwong section on my bookshelf. It needs to happen. That's a That's a new goal for 2023 getting signed and personalized editions of her books that's what i need to do but i'm gonna go i'll check back in with you guys in the afternoon time good afternoon good afternoon i'm no longer freezing it's a nice toasty 53 degrees outside we're here to talk about yellow face by rebecca f Kwong. and you know what i'm eating it up i do think that this book oh that little limb is snapped. We hate to see it. Anyway, <laughs> let me not be distracted. I have a special place in my heart for Yellow Face because it's a contemporary. I really like a contemporary. I really like a contemporary. Like, do I think that this book is better than The Burning God? No. Do I think this book is better than Babel? No. But for me, for me, for me and what I want, this is top tier. Like, there was definitely a part of me that got really excited when I was watching one of the interviews where she talked about moving away from fantasy. Doesn't seem to be the case anymore, given that she keeps teasing this little grad students coming, you know, in hell. But even that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. I will continue to read whatever this woman writes because I just eat it up. I eat it up. She did say that she wanted people to be able to read this book quickly and to, like, really be engrossed and ingrained in it. And let me tell you, that's real easy to do. I think that this is the first time in a long time that I have like forced myself to stop reading a book to come and update. Usually I'm just like, I give two fucks about updating the vlog in the moment. But right here, I'm really appreciating this experience. But the experience that I want y'all to have is to just read it. 
I want you, I think it comes like again, like in April. So it might be a little too warm in April to like bust out a blanket and like the little snow sounds and the fireplace crackling with a little warm tear or whatever. But get cozy, however one gets cozy. Maybe go lay in your hammock. I don't know. Sit out by the pool. I don't know. Whatever April is like where you are. And just read the book. Just read it. Just read the book. Put your phone in. Do not disturb. Tell people you have plans. Get yourself a little hotel room for the weekend. Do whatever it is you need to do to be able to read this book just in a go. Because the ride that Miss Juniper has me going on, the ups and the downs, too much. Is it like a twisty, thrillery ride? No. But I really love being inside this woman's head because she is so... Some of the things that she is doing, some of the things that she uses to rationalize and justify are, one, relatable. I do... I Nothing... I mean, to be fair, I do think that some of the things she has done are just like... Now, why, why did you do that? You know? Like, it is like, why did you do that vibes? But at the same time, you're like, if someone was going to do that, this is what this person... That's what this was what that person would be like. So it's weird because in one hand, it's completely completely like what are we doing here this is some batshit crazy shit but at the other time at the same time in the other hand it's like yeah people really do be like that and seeing her again work through the lies she has to tell herself the stories that she has to to fabricate to justify her actions and how you know what she is doing might be bad but other things are also bad and so in the grand scheme of badness how bad are we really acting and moving and operating and there was a revelation. I'm not, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Usually, again, this is me. Look at me. I'm growing. I'm growing. Usually, I come on here and I'm like, I can't talk about the book without spoiling. And I do think that there is a, a obviously a meteor discussion to be had. If I can just tell you the shit that's happened. But there was a revelation that happened in this book. There was a. There's been a couple of them. But one of them I read, and I was gagged. I said, now, Juniper. <laughs> Juniper, Song, Haywood, Hayward, whatever your name is. She was she a messy bitch. She a messy bitch. And you know, I'm, I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up. I still think my first update for this on Goodreads was that Miss Juniper and Miss Letitia would be best friends. I think I talked about that in my last update as well. Or at least I made mention to it. And uh, I still stand by that. I still stand by that. This scene, like, this this book is almost like there was a section in Babel where we got to see Letty. And so much of Yellowface is like, if we were in that, like, we were in Letty's head, but for 300 pages. Like, if we were just in her head for 300 pages, you know, that would be an interesting novella. If we had, like, a, a Letty novella about Babel, ooh. <laughs> oh, that'd be messy. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I've just rambled for five minutes and I didn't really tell you guys anything. But I'm eating it up. I'm really enjoying it. I'm so happy. So happy. Me and Rebecca, we did not get off on the right foot. Me and Rebecca, we got off on a foot where years ago I said, yeah, I'm gonna DNF your book. I'm gonna DNF your book. And to all the people out there <laughs> who are always telling me to DNF, why don't well, you hate this? Why don't you just DNF? This is why. In 2018, I DNF the Poppy War. In 2018, I said, this book is not for me. And maybe even if I had finished the, the, the Poppy War in 2018, I still would have given it a bad rating. But in 2022, I said, you know what? I'm not a DNF or why did I DNF that book? And I went back to it and I stuck it out. And now look at it. Me and Rebecca are thriving. We have banger after banger after banger. <sighs> look at this. This is growth. This is growth. This is this is why I live the life that I do. Because I know eventually my perseverance will be rewarded. And reading this, I am I'm being rewarded. And I can't wait for y'all to read it. Um, I do think. When I read Babel, back in that vlog, I did think that there were, there were, I could see why that book would not be universally appealing. This book feels like, I don't know how you're going to hate it. 
Like, if you just don't like literary fiction, you know, I can see it. But, like, if you like regular literary fiction that isn't... Well, I mean, it is Rebecca. I mean, <laughs> I do look for something in, a, in an author. You know, I think an author got to be able to have a strong pen game. And I do think Rebecca got a strong pen game. I do think she'll have to craft a sentence. So, um... If you are into literary merit like that, you might you might not. You might not, but I'm eating it up. I'm having a great time. I'm living my best life. I'm going to continue to live my best life at the bookstore. I will check in tonight. This has been a perfect start to my 2023. I couldn't have started this book. I could not have gotten off on a better start. Mm, couldn't have happened. I mean, I guess I kind of like rewrite. I've been watching. Uh, I'm trying to be more active on Instagram because I, I still think that you like Twitter is about to fall into the pits of hell. Uh, which just suck because I don't have a, an intense Instagram audience. Like, I don't have, like, I don't use that app like that. So I've been trying to be active in my stories. Um, so I'm going to continue to do that. But I just said I'm leaving, like, three times now. So th third time is a charm. This is the face of a man who went to the fucking bookstore. And it was closed. It was not open. And so then I went to Books A Million because I said, let me sell out and go over to Books A Million. Didn't have the book I wanted either. So they're still trying to run some like raggedy sale. Books A Million is always running a raggedy sale though. So like, I'm still not understanding how they're in business. Always running a raggedy sale. Selection is ass. Like, congrats to them. They even got a fucking special, I think they had a special edition of House of Sky and Brett. So it's like, their market share got to be doing something, but my location is pitiful. But I'll check in later. What is up, you guys? It's me. I'm back. I'm here to wrap up my reading experience of Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. This book is a good time. It's a good time. It was a good time. I say it's a good time, but obviously we're dealing with... <laughs> It really is 360, I think it's like, what, 336? Not 360. I was about to say 360. Um, it is like 300 pages of, oh, I have the bookmark. I have a bookmark. One second. Of her. Of Miss Letitia. Of Miss Letty. Of, of Miss Letty. It is, a, it is 300 pages of a character who continues to tell themselves lies, who continues to feed into this narrative about why the, the things they are doing is correct and justified and how um, anybody who is pushing back against them is like the real villain and it's not them. And you know what? It was great. It was great. It was a great time. There were some revelations that happened. There were some twists that occurred. There were some rabbit holes that we went down that I didn't expect. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect because I feel like when you know the pitch of the book, is this white author is stealing the works of her Asian classmate that she is like estranged from. It kind of feels like you kind of know the whole story. And I do think that in a way you do, which is why seeing where the narrative went and the lengths that Juniper was willing to go to do the things that she did was so interesting. And I think that experiencing that is part of why this book is so unputdownable. At least to me. At least to me. To the high fantasy girlies... I don't know about y'all. I have I'm I'm praying, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with y'all, but I feel like people are already hard on Rebecca for the lack of like fantastical things. And so like maybe you're acclimated to her just writing a fully contemporary story. I think that there is just a group of authors. I mean, to be fair, to be accurate, I did give two of her books like two stars, which to me is not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad writing. But even in those two star books, I do think that there was really strong writing and I do think that Rebecca Kwong knows how to craft a sentence. I think that that is you know a talent something that I learned in the year of our Lord 2022. I learned that not everybody knows how to write a sentence. Not everybody can string together a sentence that makes me want to underline and engage with the text and Rebecca does. Rebecca knows what she's doing when she sits down at her keyboard. She just knows what she's doing. So I'm very I think earlier in the vlog I was saying that this book comes out in April that's a lie. The book is out in May. So mark your calendars for May, not April. Mark it for April. You'll be, you'll be severely disappointed. But I gave this five out of five stars. Five out of five stars. I have no complaints. I have no notes. I would, 
if this were any other year, I would very confidently say that I was going to reread this book. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have time in 2023 to reread this book, but just know that in 2024, when I have a nice RF Kwong section somewhere on this shelf, because this is the shelf of things that I'm keeping, and this is the shelf <laughs> of ARCs and library books, and the top two are on unhaul shelves now. So when it's over here, and I have a collection, just know that I will be rereading Rebecca, and I will be annotating Rebecca, and I will be engaging in the conversations. But for now, I'm gonna go. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here with me as I read my first book of 2023. I've seen a lot of my friends reading their first book this today, and a lot of them have been going successful. So I hope that you two were in that number. Let me know if you've already started reading, if you know you've had other life priorities that you were focusing on on your January 1st, but hopefully, hopefully this is a sign from the gods that 2023 is going to be my reading year, but I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another video, but until then and until next time, bye.